What we're going to do in this tutorial is fit three lipid bilayer data sets. They're DMPC. We'll select the data sets we want to load, drag them into the app. These are the three different contrasts that were measured in D2O in 2.07 and in pure water. These are the data sets down here. We can choose whether to display them or not. The number of points in each data set in the chi-squared values. We're going to be fitting all three data sets, so let's select those and add them to the data sets to be fitted window. First thing that we've got to do is set up the model, so I'm going to go into this tree. I'm going to say that we want to fit the scale factor, the background. Let's go into the structure. At the moment there's three layers, the fronting medium, that's where the neutrons come in from. That is silicon in this case, so that would be 2.07. The first layer is going to be a silicon dioxide layer, that's the native oxide. We're going to want to fit the thickness of that layer, its roughness, that's the roughness of the silicon dioxide silicon, and the volume fraction of solvent in that layer. Now we go into the backing medium for, for this particular data set, which is the D2O, is, I think it's about 6.2. Not perfect, D2O. Right, um, so we go from silicon to silicon dioxide. The next, uh, we're going to need to insert the bilayer now. So we can either use this plus button here, and we're not going to add a slab, that's a normal slab layer model, we're going to add the lipid leaflet. And we have the choice of a range of default lipids. I'm going to choose DMPC. This is a DPMC, sorry, DMPC bilayer. And it gives us the structure and the relative parameters for this uh, lipid. You can see now that that component has been added with its uh, specific parameters. I'm then going to add another leaflet because we have a bilayer. That leaflet would either be the, back, uh, the inner leaflet or the outer leaflet. So I'm going to add another layer. This time I use Command Plus, which is the shortcut for um, adding a component. Add another leopard leaflet. And now we have the front and medium, the silicon dioxide, the inner leaflet, and the outer leaflet. Then we go on to our backing medium. Now I'm going to save regularly as we go along now, so I'm going to save the experiment as a file, so if we need to come back to it, we can. Now I'm going to start setting up the inner leaflet parameters. I'm going to make the dock a little bit larger so we have more space to, to work with. And I can expand each of these nodes. First of all, you'll see for the leaflets, we have tail and head solvent. Uh, that enables us to have a different solvent solvating the inner and outer leaflet and indeed the, um, the head or tail regions of, those head, uh, of each of those leaflets independently, which is of use when, say, you're analysing a, an air liquid monolayer. So I've selected all uh, the scattering length densities for the solvent for the inner and outer leaflet for both the head and the tail. And I've also selected the SLD of the backing medium. If I right click here, I can click on link parameters. You see now that the head and tail solvent each of the inner and the outer leaflet is going to be is fixed to that of the the backing SLD. So if I change the backing SLD to say 6.3, or so, uh, then they will change concurrency. Uh, I might want to fit the SLD of the backing medium, fit the SL, uh, the area per molecule of the of the lipid, 
the thickness of the inner he t head region, the thickness of the inner tail region will fit. Um, and we'll do the same for the outer, outer leaflet as well. Once we've uh, done this amount of initialization, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the model that we've got for this D2O data set into the other contrasts. So select this one, copy a model to here. What do I want to copy? I'm going to copy the D2O one. I'm going to do the same for the, the last contrast. And now if I go in, into those structures, you can see that we're replicating the structure of the, of the first contrast that we started setting up. The backing SLD for the, uh, this contrast, this last one, is minus 0.56 because it's in water. For this one, it's um, 2.07, so it's silicon contrast match. And we can see now that the, the, uh, the models are starting to get a lot better. Um, the next thing to do is to go in and start increasing the amount of linkages across the three data sets. So if I go into the silicon dark side, the thickness of the silicon dark side should be the same for all three data sets. If I select that parameter then uh, right click and say link equivalent parameters on other data sets and then select the data sets that I want to link across. If I then go into here, uh, this thickness here uh, for the silicon dark side for the next contrast, you'll see in the last column that it has a constraint. So if I change the thickness to say 10, you can see that uh, this thickness here has changed as well. We're going to do the same for the roughness. We're going to do the same for the volume fraction of solvent in that silicon dioxide layer. Now, with regards to the area per molecule, I want to set that the same for inner and outer leaflets for all the contrasts. So I'm going to select both area per molecules for inner and outer leaflet for the first contrast. Right click link equivalent parameters on other data sets and do the same for the head thickness, tail thickness, and for the outer the outer parameters, outer leaflet parameters as well. Lastly, one thing that I didn't do setting during the original setup is to reverse the monolayer by, uh, for the outer leaflet. By default, for each of these lipid, um, for each of these lipid leaflets, the head groups are towards the fronting medium. So for the outer leaflet, which is furthest away from the fronting medium, which is the silicon, we have to reverse that so the tails come first. And that's why there's this reverse monolayer selection. And we'll do that setup for the last, the outer leaflet in the last parameter, outer leaflet in the last contrast. Just check that it's been done for this one, yes. The next thing to do now is to uh, have some sensible limits for the, for the fit. So I'm going to click on Auto Adjust Limits, and it gives some uh, sensible defaults for a limit. I mean, when I say sensible, it chooses zero as the lower, lim the, the lower bound, and twice the parameter value is the upper bound. Right, for the error per molecule, it's probably not going to go below 50 angstroms per molecule. Thickness of the heads might be I don't know, lower of 4. Thickness of the tails lower of 10. And we'll do the same for the outer leaflet. 
Of course, we could have selected the thickness of the tail regions for the inner and outer leaflet to be the same. We could have done that constraint. The other thing that we could have done here is say, put some water in between the inner and the outer leaflet. Once we're happy with our parameters, with our parameter limit bounds, we can then go on to do a fit. I'll probably actually save the data set or save the experiment before I go any further, just in case we have any further issues, we can get back to what we the initial setup. Was going in here, changing these limits to other of the scattering advanced D to same values. And probably as well for the silicon dark side, the maximum volume fraction of solvent say probably won't be above 0.1 or so, but we'll just set a sensible limit for that as well. Okay, once we're happy with our fit, we'll save it. We'll save the experiment so we can come back to it. And then click on do fit. see here this diet, uh, fitting progress window appears which shows how chi-squared is varying in this window and the total elapsed time in this window here. By default the fitting uses differential evolution for the minimization, but you can also choose Levenberg Marquardt with the least squares, or you can use uh, BFGS, which is also a very quite robust solver. There we go. I'm just gonna hide the theoretical data set. There's the three different data sets co-refined, contrast co-refined. The area per molecule for this lipid molecule is around 55 angstroms. In this column here, the sigma column, we get the parameter uncertainty. So the uncertainty in the area per molecule is 0.17 square ang or 0.18 square ang angstrom squared uh, on, top of, on top of that value and so on. If we go to the console, you can also see a gen the output of the parameter set for all the for all the contrasts. So the inner leaflet uh, parameters and uncertainties and what the bounds were. So you could copy that and paste it in a logbook or something along those lines. Once I finish that, I'm going to save the experiment so we can come back and get these parameters. A few other model options uh, we can. Uh, load extra data in or refresh the existing data, save those fits in here to put them into another graph plotting program. We can choose different algorithms to fit. We can fit as uh, linear versus Q, log R versus Q, RQ to the 4 versus Q, RQ squared versus Q and so on. Uh, there's also an a scattering med density calculator and finally, you can find the documentation for Refinex on the web.